In this video, I'm going to go through three different methods to solve a system of linear equations, and we'll use the same two equations for every method. The first method to solve this system is to graph each of the equations, and the way we'll graph first off will be to isolate y. y is equal to mx plus b. This form of the equation tells us slope and y-intercept. To get y by itself, in the first equation, we'll subtract x both sides and rewrite the equation in a different way. y is equal to negative x plus 8. And from here, we can see that the slope is negative 1 and the y-intercept is 8 or 0, 8. 0, 8 is right here, y-intercept, and now slope is negative 1 over 1. We'll go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. We're forming a negative slope. Of course, we could go up 1, left 1 as well to get the slope. We're given the equation. We know that this line goes on forever. Second equation, let's isolate the y. We have negative y is equal to subtract x both sides, negative x plus 12. We need to divide both sides by negative 1, which leaves us positive y is equal to negative divided by negative makes a positive, and positive divided by the negative makes the negative. The slope here is a positive 1, and the y-intercept is negative 12, or 0, comma, negative 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and we're a little short on this graph. 11, 12, it's probably about right here. And we've got a slope of 1 over 1, rise up 1, run over 1, rise up 1, run over 1, rise up 1, run over 1, etc. We'll form a line here and try to get that intersection. That seems to be about right here. Looks like there's the intersection. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 in the x direction and negative 2 in the y direction. Another way to graph is to use x and y intercepts. And it's usually quite useful, but for this question, we once again ran out of graph paper, but I'll show you that method anyway. Set x equal to 0 in the first equation. Make this a 0, and you get y is equal to 8, the y-intercept. And setting y equals 0 in the first equation, you'd get x equals 8, and that would be the x-intercept. Once again, the y-intercept hits right here, 0, 8, and the x-intercept hits right here, 8, 0. That works out quite nicely. But for the second equation, when you set x equal to 0, we get y is equal to negative 12. Let me just fix this y here. When we set y is equal to 0, we get x is equal to 12. And that takes us off the graph paper again. 0, negative 12 hits down here. 12, comma 0 hits about right there. Graphing by using xy intercepts does give us the same result. Let's graph by using a table of values. For table of values, it is still useful to solve for y. Here we had y is equal to negative x plus 8, and y is equal to x minus 12. We could set up a table of values. We'll choose a few points here. How about 0, 1, and 2 for the first one? We plug in 0 here. We get y is equal to 8. If we plug in a 1 here, negative 1 plus 8 would be a 7. And if we plug in a 2 here, we'd get negative 2 plus 8, which is 6. We have 0, 8, the y-intercept, 1 and 7, 2 and 6. For the blue equation, let's not choose 0 because that took us off the graph. Let's choose 2. 
If we plug in a 2 here, we get negative 10. 2 and negative 10. It's looking like the intersection is going to be here. Let's try a 2, 4, 6, 8. We get negative 4. 8 subtract 12 is negative 4. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 2, 4 right there. And how about 9? 9 plugged in here. 9 subtract 12 is negative 3. 1, 2, 3 right there. What about 10? 10 will give us negative 2 right here. Why don't we try a 10 right here? 10 in this equation would give us negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Negative 2? Well, look at that. 10 comma negative 2 is the intersection point. And there it is. We can be pretty confident that 10 comma negative 2 is the solution because we have this table of values. Remember, there are infinitely many points that we could use in our table of values. We just want to make sure that the points are fitting on the graph. I bet you're wondering if there's another way to solve these systems where you don't have to graph. Because graphing does have limitations. First off, the x and y intercepts could fall off the graph paper. And secondly, the intersection point might not fall within the graph paper that you're using. But most importantly, what if the intersection point does not have whole numbers? What if you're working with fractions? It can be very useful to use other methods to solve these systems, especially when you're solving more complicated problems. We'll use the same two equations to solve by substitution. What we want to do is we want to solve for one of the variables in one of the equations. Let's solve for x this time. Subtract y, both sides. What we do to one side, we do to the other in an equation x will be 8 minus y. We've just changed the look of the first equation. Now what we'll do is we'll take that 8 minus y and insert it into the second equation. We have x minus y is equal to 12 and where we see that x we'll put 8 minus y in there. We can collect our like terms, negative 2y and a plus 8 is equal to 12. Isolate the negative 2y by subtracting 8 both sides. Negative 2y is equal to 12 minus 8 is 4. Isolate y by dividing by negative 2. What we do to one side, we do to the other. This gives us a 1. y is equal to negative 2. We don't know the x value yet, but we found the y value. When y is equal to negative 2 in the first equation, x plus a negative 2 is equal to 8, which is the same thing as x minus 2 is equal to 8. We want x by itself. Create a zero pair by adding 2. What you do to one side, you do to the other x is equal to 10. The coordinate then is 10 comma negative 2. But we should check our work. Let's grab the second equation to see. We'll plug in the 10, plug in the y. Does that equal 12? 10 plus 2, does that equal 12? And yes, 12 does equal 12. Therefore, 10 comma negative 2 is the solution to this system of linear equations. Here we have two equations and two unknowns. And we're looking to solve for x and y so that these two equations remain true. Or in other words, we're finding that intersection point, that x comma y value that both of these equations have in common. We have a left side to these equations and we have a right side to these equations. For each one, the first equation, the left side equals the right side, and the second equation, 
the left side equals the right side. But also, we can say that the two left sides are equal to the two right sides. Therefore, if we add up the two left sides and we add up the two right sides, we will create a third equation. Have a look what happens. x plus x is 2x plus y minus y is a zero pair. That makes a zero. Equals 8 plus 12 is 20. 2x is equal to 20. Wow, we've eliminated the y's. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 10. Use the x equals 10 in the first equation to find out y. We want y by itself. y is equal to negative 2. The solution then is 10 comma negative 2. You always want to check your work use the other equation x minus y is equal to 12 and double check the 10 comma negative 2. Does 10 minus a minus 2 equal 12? 10 plus 2 does that equal 12? And yes 12 equals 12. The solution to this linear system is 10 comma negative 2. Exactly what we found using the other methods.